thanks, and thanks everyone for coming, or for staying, rather. So um, I will present a series of replications of a 2014 study titled Blended with Science, hence the title of this talk. So this study shows that uh, we can use simple elements such as graphs, I will use the term chart to avoid any confusion, so charts uh, can increase people's belief in a medication's efficacy even if it doesn't provide any additional information and this is presumably because people associate charts with science. This paper concludes that even trivial elements can increase public persuasion despite they are not truly indicating scientific expertise and advises us to ignore spurious cues to a scientific basis. So the bottom line is that we can easily fool people with trivial charts and this was a conclusion that was uh, catchy enough to be featured in many blogs and uh, um, newspapers uh, and even cited in InfoViz now. But my co-author and I thought that we shouldn't be too quick maybe to cite this work as uh, empirical evidence and we're especially concerned with the term trivial. So what charts were used in, in this experiment exactly? So this is a chart used in the first experiment. So it's very simplistic, it's not very beautiful, but uh, the, there is nothing wrong about it, there is nothing deceptive about it, it shows actual data. The data is from a fictional uh, medical trial testing the efficacy of a new drug for preventing the common cold. So we can see on the left that almost 90% of people who didn't take the drug became sick, whereas among people who took the, took the drug ahead of time, less than 50% became sick. So there is no other information provided such as sample size or inferential information, but still uh, this information is very relevant to the questions that were asked, which were um, how effective is the new medication and does the medication really reduce illness? So of course there is more to the study. Uh, the two quantities uh, shown in the chart were, were also stated in an initial paragraph of text and this paragraph was shown with and without the chart. So to summarize, there were two conditions, one with the text only and a condition with the text and the chart. So the study found that uh, people who saw the chart thought the drug was more effective on average. The authors uh, presented the chart as trivial for two reasons. One is that uh, it's very simplistic, it only shows two data points. Also, uh, most importantly, because it's redundant uh, with the text. Still, uh, I think it's reasonable to assume that at least some people could have found it easier to get a sense of the stated drug uh, effect by simply looking at the chart rather than uh, looking at the numbers provided in text, especially since those numbers were fully spelled out in this first experiment at least. So uh, we set ourselves to determine whether the study's finding could be explained by a facilitating effect of the chart on data comprehension which amounts to determining whether the chart helped people understand the stated data. So it might seem like a very simple question, but very surprisingly, there, there is very little empirical data in the literature that we can use to answer this question. So we have to do, uh, answer it ourselves. To be fair, the original uh, study tried to answer this question. In their second experiment, they asked participants to report the percent by which the medication reduced illness about half an hour after they finished the experiment. And they found that uh, seeing the chart didn't help answer the question, but there are at least five reasons that we list in our paper why we think those results are not very informative, uh, including the fact that this is a recall test, not a comprehension test, and also that uh, a reduction in percentage points is not the most intuitive way of thinking about the drug efficacy. So we designed our own comprehension test. Let's go, go through it together quickly. So first you have to assume that the data you saw is accurate. Now imagine there is a group of 20 people whom you know will all get sick uh, without the medication. Now assume we give the medication to all of them. So how many people do you expect will still get the common cold? You don't have to compute, just a rough estimate. The best answer is 11. This is not a very easy test. We didn't expect everyone would uh, answer 11, but we did expect that uh, people who had a um, better appreciation of the static drug effect would give uh, responses closer to 11 on average. So now to our first uh, replication. This was a multi-page web form hosted on Crowdflower. 
The first page showed one of the two stimuli we saw, depending on the condition. The second page showed the comprehension test we just saw. Uh, our dependent variable here was comprehension error, which was a function of the answer given. So the error was close to zero for the best answer, 11, and uh, increased with the distance to the best answer. Uh, and this was a function that was decided before running an experiment, and you can find more details and a rationale in our paper. So we got 123 participants randomly assigned uh, to one of the two conditions. The original experiment had 62. 35% uh, were female, mean age 35. They had a good education le level overall, and they were coming from different variety of countries uh, all over the world. So uh, we have three questions to analyze. Two persuasion questions that we replicate, and one comprehension question that we add to the original experiment. The first persuasion question was, how effective is the new medication? So this is the distribution of answers for the no chart condition, you know, between one and nine. And this is the distribution in the chart condition. They are surprisingly similar, and indeed, if you look at the mean responses, we can see that they, they are similar. By the way, I'm quite proud to be the fourth talk in this session to present results using interval estimates. Um, and if we look at the difference between the means, we can see that here we have no evidence that the chart improved persuasion. Here are the results from the original experiment in red. Um, so we can see that the results are not really consistent with the original experiment, although there is some overlap in the confidence intervals. Okay, now to the second question was, does the medication re really reduce illness? Many people, about 90% replied yes in the two conditions, and we didn't find evidence for a difference. Here are the results from the previous study. This time, it's very inconsistent as the intervals don't even overlap. We're surprised here. Okay, so the third question, which was our focus, the comprehension question, here is the distribution of responses in the two conditions. They are very widely spread. Few people gave the best answer 11. But still, it seems that the answers tend to cluster more around 11 in the chart condition. If we look at the mean uh, comprehension error, uh, we can see that it seems to be the case, and this is confirmed by looking at the ratio between those two mean comprehension errors. The ratio is like less than one, meaning that the chart likely helped uh, comprehension. So to summarize, this first replication we did find that the chart had a facilitating effect on comprehension, but this didn't seem to translate into higher persuasion as we were not able to replicate the findings from the previous studies. So at this point, we're not too much concerned about that because, because it's only one first replication. So we wanted to focus on replicating the second experiment from the original study. There were two experiments. So in the second experiment, they introduced a few changes. First, the data was changed in the two conditions, and the 40% drop became a 20% drop. The chart was updated. Also, the two questions were replaced by a single one, asking people to report the degree to which they believe the new drug is effective. And finally, uh, in the no chart condition, a new line of text was added that repeated the 2% using numerals. So this put the no chart condition on a more equal footing with the chart condition, since in neither condition did people have to find the fully spelled out numbers in the text. And we wanted to know whether the chart here in this, in this case would still help. So this is our second replication, uh, also run on Qualflower. The first page uh, contained one of the two uh, updated stimuli. The second page, same comprehension test. We updated comprehension error because this time 15 is the best answer. We got 164 new participants. The original experiment had 56, and they were, uh, the demographics were similar. Now we have only two questions to analyze. Uh, the persuasion question uh, gave, uh, we didn't find a clear effect of the chart on persuasion again. Uh, with the comprehension question, um, we uh, also didn't find an effect this time. Uh, we're, again, we're surprised by the large proportion of very inaccurate answers. 
lots of very inaccurate answers, and we noticed uh, symmetry around 10 in the answer. So we thought maybe uh, people, lots of people got confused and reported the number of people who remained healthy instead of reporting the number of people who became sick. So we redesigned the comprehension test, changed the narrative a bit, and had people give their answer visually by moving a slider. So uh, third replication is the same as the second one, as the previous one, but with the new comprehension test. We got 176 more participants. Uh, we again didn't find a, a clear positive effect of the chart on the um, persuasion. Uh, concerning uh, comprehension, this time you can see the symmetry has almost disappeared. People give on average better answers. And uh, it's possible that the chart also had a positive effect on comprehension, but this time the evidence is weaker. It's rather weak. So here we are, we're starting to be a bit concerned as we <laughs> given our multiple failures to replicate the initial uh, results on persuasion. And one clear difference was that we're using an international population where the, the original study used uh, US um, residents. They used MTurk in their first experiment, and we thought maybe the difference is due to cultural or language differences. So we ran a last replication, this time on MTurk. And we got 160 more participants, all US citizens. And here we are really extremely surprised as to see that the chart had a negative effect on persuasion, meaning that when people saw the chart, they were le less persuaded about the efficacy of the drug. And it seems that uh, the difference might come from the no chart condition, which in the original study was much less persuasive than in our study but we couldn't explain why. Uh, participants gave more accurate uh, answers to the comprehension question than in quadflower overall, but this time we didn't find evidence for uh, effect of the chart. So it seems, so we have many results that are not conclusive and it even looks like some of them are not consistent, but we can combine the results from the four experiments to get more precise estimates using a meta-analysis. So we computed coin Z for the important effects. This is the difference in means divided by standard deviation. I'm not a big fan of coin Z usually, but here uh, it had two advantages. First, it, it allows us to estimate the uh, effect size uh, relative to individual differences since those were huge. And also, most importantly, uh, it's a unitless measure. So it will allow us to some extent to compare the effect uh, of the chart on comprehension with its effect on, on persuasion. All positive values to the right indicate uh, positive effect of charts on persuasion or on comprehension. So here we have the results from our first replication. The blue confidence interval is the effect on persuasion. We can see that it's unclear, maybe even possibly negative, whereas the black one is the effect on comprehension. As we already saw, it's, it's slightly positive. Here are the results for our remaining replications, including the uh, surprisingly large negative effect of the chart on persuasion in our last replication. And here are the effects uh, for all replications combined. So we can see that the effects are not very impressive, they're, they're quite small, but still it's quite clear that the chart had a more, more positive effect on comprehension than on persuasion overall across all our experiments. So to summarize, our original question was, can the study's finding be explained by a facilitating effect of the charts on data comprehension? We're not able to replicate those studies, so we can, the question kind of becomes moot, unfortunately. And we discussed in our paper several reasons why uh, this could have been the case, and the bottom line is that we don't know. Still, something that uh, appears to be the case is that the, the, the effect may not be as robust as was claimed in the initial study and might need very specific conditions to be, to be replicated. We did find a small positive effect of the charts on comprehension overall. So why should the InfoBiz community care about those results, the visualization committee more generally? Uh, as far as we know, there is no proof yet that plain, non-deceptive charts or visualizations can persuade without informing could very well be the case, but we still have to establish that empirically. 
if we run such studies, it's very important to rigorously establish that the persuasive visualization or chart is trivial, meaning it doesn't improve comprehension. So we cannot show, we cannot prove a zero effect, but we can, as we illustrated, estimate standardized effect sizes and verify that the effect of the chart on, on the comprehension is reliably lower than its effect on persuasion, as in this hypothetical result that I would consider maybe a successful um, evidence. So several questions, interesting questions raised uh, for InfoViz in general. For example, when is the visualization, visualization trivial or put differently, at what point does the data set is large enough for visualizations to become useful? Or is there any such a thing as a trivial visualization uh, apart from visualizations of trivial data like here? And actually, we were focusing a lot on visualizing large data sets, but we know surprisingly little about visualizing very small data sets. Also, another interesting question is, uh, do charts really trigger associations with science or with other things depending on their visual design? Thank you very much. I'm ready to take your questions. <laughs>